Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking. It's been a while since I checked in here, so I thought I'd do one last podcast of 2020. Uh, I have some really exciting news for my podcast and my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll go through that at the end. Uh, but before that, I thought we'd chat a little bit about uh, this year. And boy, <laughs> what a year it's been. Um, really, I think a lot of us have had the experience of wanting to kind of re-evaluate everything in life, uh, in business, in, in, in really everything. And um, really importantly for me, one of the kind of perils to this business is you can really get burnt out. You know, I see everything, I see every watch, I have to kind of pay attention to most things. Um, there's a lot of BS in the industry. Uh, there's a lot of uh, BS in the collecting community. There's just a lot to get annoyed about sometimes. Um, and I found that 2020 was a year where I really reconnected with my love of really, really good watches. Um, as the world was sort of deconstructed around us and everything good was ripped out and uh, there, there's almost no more art, there's been no creativity, there's been, um, it's just sort of depressing. Uh, I've, I've really found that I'm loving owning uh, and interacting with great watches. Um, and, and that's uh, been kind of uh, a really special thing for me this year. I think that as we look forward um, into uh, what we want the world to be, how we want to live in this world, um, great independent watchmaking really embodies a lot of the values that are important. Um, the creativity, the risk-taking, the entrepreneurial spirit, the uh, manufacturing, uh, actual making of things, the attempt at uh, extreme, extreme levels of quality. Um, these are things that we're all missing from most of the world this year. And I think, uh, it, in my opinion at least, and maybe you've shared a similar thing, uh, you've uh, really uh, realized a new appreciation of these sorts of values. And so I'm, I'm honored to be able to uh, help this ecosystem and help these little brands and work with uh, collectors to find this stuff because I really do think that uh, these sorts of things are important to shaping the world that we want to live in. And so that's been a really awesome thing of 2020 for me. Um, uh, as sort of addition to that is I have found this year that a lot of new people are, uh, if not finding the independent watch world. Um, maybe they knew about it before, but really taking it very seriously this year. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with what I was just talking about and, um, and the realization of the values that we all want. Um, also, I think that uh, just people have more time behind their computers to, uh, you know, when, when you don't have much time, the things you're exposed to are mainly these big brands that are pouring all this marketing money into the world. And so you're hit with ads everywhere and you see their boutique summer at Deo Drive and this, that, and the other. Um, but when we all had a little bit more time to Google around, uh, I think a lot of people have found independent watchmaking and been able to dive deeper and understand it a little bit more. Um, it certainly didn't hurt that at the same time, uh, several of the brands uh, that I love um, really skyrocketed in value. And uh, obviously, FP Journe had just a wild ride this year. Um, Richard Meal maintained their, uh, their great heights, but I think also a lot of focus going on to their early pieces that I love. Again, uh, early watches from most of the independent brands that I support have been really strong uh, watches from uh, sort of the, the very little guys, the kind of uh, Roger Smith, Kari Voodalainen, Vinny Halter, that type of stuff has been just on fire. Um, so I, I think this is all good for the ecosystem of, of this little world. I think it's a virtuous 
circle. It is, in my opinion, the part of watchmaking that does have value, that is important. It's the area that uh, I put my life behind. Um, and I, I don't need this. I mean, it's a, it's a fun business because I like it, but if I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't be here. And so um, this sort of thing makes it a pleasure for me to come to work and to share these things with you and to explain um, why I think they're really great things, right? Um, so I think that uh, in the future, these trends are probably just going to continue. I think pe more and more people are going to find this area. It's probably not great news for the big brands, but, you know, F them. Uh, we don't need them. So the more people flood into this area, the better, uh, within reason. I mean, some of the stuff uh, rubs me a little bit wrong. I don't, I don't love watching people chase, uh, you know, everybody chase one thing because it becomes the hot fad thing to buy and then people end up way overpaying even though it is something good to start with. That kind of thing annoys me a little bit. I've discussed it a little bit before on this channel, um, but I don't want to get too into the negatives. It's mainly positives and I expect that to, uh, to keep going. Um, so I guess that brings me to the exciting news for this channel. Um, I've recently taken over a new uh, studio space. Uh, I just purchased a bunch of equipment. Uh, I'm going to really use 2021 to boom this YouTube channel and my podcast. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to up the level of quality, which will be great. But the other main thing that I'm really focusing on is, um, just the ease of getting into it. So a lot of times I, I don't love making videos. It's, it's a little bit annoying to me and the way that I've had it requires a lot of setup each time I do it. Um, it's just not that easy. So I'm building out this new studio setup um, to really focus on getting very high quality, but making it really easy for me to do so that I can just get something in and maybe just go on live, maybe even just flip on and go for it um, and let you guys participate more. Um, and uh, you know, we'll see how it goes from there. But that's what I'm gonna be spending the first uh, month or so of the year doing is just setting up this studio and getting it all uh, all right and working and whatever. Hopefully I'll be able to make a couple videos while that's occurring. Uh, but just know that in 2021, you're gonna get a lot of really great independent watch content uh, from me, but still in my own style. I'm not like hiring a, a director and you know, you're not gonna get on uh, some sort of like broadcaster on here or whatever. I kind of like the sort of do-it-yourself vibe of this channel. I did that on purpose. Uh, I don't like when things get super slick. I feel that it um, it kind of takes away from your ability to really see the watch or really interact. You know, um, when you look at like a brand's marketing videos or something like this, they're so slick that you get to the end of them and you don't really get a feel for what the watch is even like in, in real life and in real lighting and with somebody's hands on it, and whatever. Um, so I do want to make sure that I keep some of that kind of grit because uh, the goal of this isn't just to make pretty videos. I'm not going to win an Emmy or something. The goal really is to be able to share these things with you uh, because they're so hard to get your hands on. And most people, even if you do have your hands on it, uh, you know, you're probably in front of some sort of salesperson in a retail store that doesn't know what they're talking about. So, uh, so that's kind of the, the, I guess the three goals I would say are to, to show you the watches in a way that uh, really gives you a good feeling for what they're like, um, to give you real data in a way that you can actually understand about the watches, um, and also then to bring in sort of my uh, historical awareness and my perspective after 20 or so years uh, in this area. Uh, I just have a point of view, and so I give that to you. Uh, that's my own opinion, but I guess uh, those of you who come here a lot, uh, I hope like it. So uh, that's that. I've got really cool watches in the safe uh, that I'm hopefully gonna video for you soon. Uh, it's all gonna be nice. You're gonna uh, 
you're gonna notice new paint, new camera angles, hopefully really good sound, um, good lighting, uh, and uh, most of all, just more frequency, more videos, more styles of videos. So I really appreciate your feedback. Um, I don't know, all the people on YouTube say to hit subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, whatever it is that they tell you to do, go do it, uh, help out my channel. I'm gonna be making a lot of stuff for you, so hopefully we, we keep this virtual, virtuous circle going. Ah, ending 2021 with a vocal flub. That seems kind of perfect in a way. Okay, see you in 2020, eh, 2020, 2021. I just screwed this whole thing up. So perfect for 2020 that I'm gonna leave it in. I'll see you in 2021. Happy New Year.